What? What time is that? You know what time it is. It's Jeep time. Jeep time. All right, hey, this is gonna be a really fun video. Uh, we are going to check out what, how much axle clearance we lose as we air down. We both have 35s, we got Toyo Mud Trains. Um, I'm gonna change the name. I need some suggestions. This is no longer v Vader. Uh, Vader sounds a little, what does it sound? Uh, it doesn't fit your Jeep the best, and there's, there's too many too, other Vaders. Too many other Vader Jeeps. Yeah, it's just Ruby Kid is special to that's me. That's Ruby Kid. Ruby Kid, stay in Ruby Kid. Never been another Ruby Kid. Ruby Kid, R U B I K I D D, capital K. All right, so we need to kid. know because this says the kid right here. Um, but w you know, we've heard people say, "Well, we don't like to air down because as much because we lose ground clearance." Well, let's check it out. Let's grab a level. And you know, let me get this set up on a little tripod. Let me crawl underneath there and do it. Okay, so let me see. Let's drop it right here. So you are at what, 35? Um, you're 35 psi, right? Right? Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. So the bottom of the 30, I want to make sure I get. In the same location. Hold on, hold on. Let's come back a little bit. Now that I realize where I'm shooting. Oh, it's right on 15. Uh, just a. Uh, yeah, it's on 15. It's right on 15 inches. Okay, dude. Ready? Lower these things. We're going to take them down to 20 measure the same exact spot okay so we have both sides down at 20. i'm on the x i marked a little x down here on the concrete to make sure i'm at the exact same spot where i'm measuring and i am by the way for those of you who don't know this is a stabila we use german levels i'm a I'm a general contractor and we like things level and plumb. Best level you can buy. Okay. 14 7 8. Okay. We lost an eighth of an inch. Take it down to 15 pounds. Are you there? Yep. Just taking both sides down. Uh, let me get Mark back on the X. Right at a quarter of an inch. Or yeah, pretty much quarter of an inch. Alright, so let's go let's go down to twelve pounds. Alright. You there? Okay, we're a little bit less. A little bit less than three eighths. So we're at fourteen and five eighths. Let's go to ten. Alright, so He's already he's already aired that down to ten. Hold on, don't start yet. It's got a good squat to it. Looks nice. This one's at twelve too. Looks good. Definitely can go more. All right, do it, man. Take it down to ten, also. Now you don't leave because we're going to Yori. And we got a bunch more in this video. Ten. So we went from uh, okay here. Fourteen and a half. Yeah. Yeah, fourteen and a half. Okay. All right. We got to get these things aired up and book it down to Yori because uh, we're gonna. That's going to be our next thing as far as checking. So overall. Going from 35 down to 10, we've lost a half inch axle clearance right here. Take it down to 20 pounds. So the whole purpose of this uh, test right here is to watch that tire fully collapse onto this log. Now, what appears to be about three quarters of an inch gap 
off to your left there, you're going to see as we get closer to 20 pounds, it's going to be touching. I believe it will be, if not fully over it. And we're getting close. Here it is. Get it close. Okay, so we're at 20 right there. You can already see it's closing up the gap, starting to take the uh, shape of the tire. Um, let's go to, what, 15, let's go to 15. So now we're dropping to 15 pounds and you will see it's wrapping right around that stump now. Looking good. That's 15. Okay. All right, so it's at 15 now. We got really good bulge here on the sides of the tires. You're like, well, it's on a stump. But even even if it wasn't 15 and less, you're you're you got a pretty good ground contact. Let's go 12. 12 is where magic really starts to happen. Yeah, the tire really starts to take on a good look, and it just looks like it wants to do some work. Oh man, this thing is like totally, I sure hope it's showing it, that 10 pounds is totally conformed around this stump now. It just, it's like it's swallowing it. It's like, yeah, totally. So, so I actually, that's, time. I, that's at 10. Oh, here, let me take it off tripod. Yeah, check out the. Check out the belly there, and boy, she's just swallowing that thing up. It's like, feed me, feed me, I want to go over everything. All right, let's go do Daniel. All right. Well, let's go check out Harley's Jeep. He's got it. Well, it's flexed a little bit here on that stump. I know you didn't totally see it. Yeah, it's flexed out, flexed out some, flexed, flexed out some, looking all sick. All right, let's go. Let's go check out the, looking pretty good. Looks real good. This is what I like back here. It's got a ton of clearance, a ton of clearance. All right, let's, uh, let's get in there. Has he got any bump stop left? Oh man, he's got a ton. It's come down in contact. The um, Daystar bump stop has came down in contact, but he, you still got this much stroke, so. That's about right, isn't it? Yep, he's still got quite a bit of up travel. Take it around the other side. Yeah, so getting it deflated. What I use for <laughs> deflating them is A or B, whenever you order the hose kit, they send one of these little connectors and it just, they're the same end as the, the electronic gauge. Just I throw that on there and then whenever I think it's getting close to that pressure, I throw the electronic one and finish it up. So the reason I put that one on there is, uh, I don't have to stand around the entire time and wait for it to deflate. That's pretty handy. So the only thing is you do have to change them. Uh, that takes literally seconds. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. All right, so that's what I was talking about. There's a uh, bump stop in there. If you've watched our videos, you know what it is. So he's got a couple more tires. Look at that. <laughs> Almost perfect. Right on 10. Put that stupid woke drink down. I know. You know, for the amount that you wear that shirt in videos, uh -huh. Chase better remember us. Mm -hmm. You better not get woke on us. I know. Don't be doing it. Don't be doing it, Chase. Now, let's check out his Jeep here. His Rube Kid. Looking all excellent. Hopefully, the parking brake and first gear holds it. Either that, well, I guess the tree would catch up. Um, but yeah, so he went down to 10 pounds. You got any curb rash? I see you caught one right here. Uh, that was hard to bear. Oh, was that? Oh, I take that back. He, believe it or not, he did that on sawmill a week or two ago. Like, sawmill? That's an easy trail. Well, it's rutted out in the one area. You got a fun little area on uh, sawmill this year. And hopefully by the end of the end of this year, come fall time, it's going to be excellent. Just like John, Dutch John was a couple years ago. It's lame now, they put a bunch of guardrails up and, oh well. But either way, both of us walked right up it and 
10, 12, 15 pounds. Harley, what's your uh, take on what air pressure? Okay, a guy with a Rubicon out here, 285, 75, 17s, load range C. Those are BF Goodrich all train. What should he be running? Uh, 15. I think he's about on, 15 pounds. Um, and I mean, you can see you're not hardly losing anything. We're both running 10. Now, if you go look at the side of my wheels, let's go over and look at them. Oh, I ain't, I ain't walking up there. Jeez, that's all the way up there. This video ain't worth that much. Um, either way, my, my, my rash rings are gone. They're just... Whew. I mean, I, I'm happy that they're on there, but they are shredded. But I, I'm pretty aggressive. I take whatever line I want and... Yeah. But I think... Uh, even, we're going to mess with Harley somewhere between 12, 10 to 12. He thought he was going to be running lower than that. I don't think you ever will, not, except for the dunes. Not on these uh, high rocks. Yeah, so either way, guys and girls, we're having a blast out here. We had a, saw a bunch of people on Sawmill, but nobody out here on uh, Daniel, at least right now. So all by ourselves. Uh -huh. All by ourselves. All right, let's go. All right, so that's testing the limits of that JL right there. All right, I got a bunch to cover here. I'm gonna try to do it quick. This video is getting long. Um, the main reason why we air down 100% okay 90% is ride quality 10% is traction I know there's a lot of other guys the main reason why they are down is um traction but for us for a good example yesterday we were going to film this on sawmill we we had a rock picked out that we're going to do it on as far as the compression on Harley's Jeep I told him I says when we get into the park don't air down let's ride there then we'll air down well, it happened to be when we got there, there was a bunch of Jeeps around that area. And I says, you know, I don't want to get in there and start filming, you know, mess with them. Because a lot of times you pull a camera out and they'll move. And I, I wanted to be courteous. I was like, well, we'll go find something else. So we went, left that trail, went down another trail, went on Daniel, found a stump. And was like, cool. Well, by the time we got there, Harley gets out of his Jeep. He's like, I got a headache. And I was like, yeah. I said, I know. I said, it's been a while since I've rode around without airing down. It's violent. So if you can think about that, if you can add a shock um, before your suspension shock even sees that um, that harsh hit, why not? I mean, you're going to save your body, you're going to save your, your pinch welds in your body, your frame, your suspension, your dash. You ever hear those dashes creaking everywhere? Why not? Now, the other camp over there says, um, I'm afraid of taking a, a, you know, bending a wheel. Hey, I understand. I do. Um, but for us, we'd whole lot rather be concerned about the longevity of the vehicle uh, than, and yeah, if we have to replace the rim, then we do. It is what it is. That's that's where our thinking goes. All right, as far as airing down, sand. It, you, the first time you go on sand, uh, for us, we're down to 10 pounds. I mean, you can't even move on sand. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be doing a video on that later this year when we're at the sand dunes. Um, tire pressure gauges. Tire pressure gauges, we, it's Harley and I's, um, we feel that there's more tires that have lost their beads due to faulty tire pressure gauges than anything. And I, I wanna break this down to a torque wrench. A torque wrench has a window that it actually works in. For example, I have a 3 8 10 to 100 foot pound uh, clicker torque wrench. I know for a fact that that is marked wrong. I mean, it misrepresented is better words. They should not be selling that as a 10 to 100. The real window that that works in good is maybe 40 to 90. It doesn't work um, good low and it doesn't work good high. There's, uh, we'll say the upper three-quarter range is where its really sweet spot is. 
if we can transmit that down to a pressure gauge, I would never use a semi truck uh, pressure gauge, a one, uh, 10 to 100 to air down with. I mean, I can guarantee you on the low end of that pressure gauge, I could probably be either one pound or 20 pounds. And we, I, you know what, that, that might be a good video right there. We have personally had valve uh, um, pressure gauges that had swings of between five to eight pounds. I actually think we even had one 10 pounds that was off. So I'm wondering that if some of the tires that have lost their bead is due to pressure, uh, faulty pressure gauges. All right, um, I got some a really cool video coming out that it's not been made yet. I already know what I'm thinking about doing. It's along the same line here, and it's for either way. We'll just leave it at that. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed a lot of good data in this video, and see you on the next time.